Hello everyone, so welcome to day 14 of the Murakami Marathon. So the past like four days of the Freedathon, I didn't vlog, I didn't read, I didn't do much of anything. I did, yeah, no, I basically went to work, slept, and did nothing else. So yeah, it's been, I'm not gonna lie, the past just week has been a kind of rough mental health week. And that's why I'm sitting here with no makeup and my hair hasn't been washed in like three days and a blanket. So um, that's just the mood of the day. It really sucks because I had obviously been planning this readathon for months <laughs> and I worked so hard to put it together and I'm so excited for it. And just earlier in the week, I just wasn't feeling myself. And then at the end of the week, it was just really, really bad. Yesterday was a very high anxiety day. It was, it was just a really, really bad day. And so, yeah, it kind of sucks that my readathon was a bit of a fail for myself, but it is so awesome seeing so many people reading Murakami and discussing, and it's been a lot of fun. I haven't been that active on Instagram or Twitter either because I just... I just, <laughs> honestly, it, might, it kept making me feel really guilty every time I saw other people tweeting about my my readathon that I wasn't even doing anymore. So it just, it kind of sucked. And just, mental health sucks. I hate everything. Yeah. A lot of people know I have OCD and a lot of people don't associate that as a anxiety disorder, but it is. <laughs> and I have really bad mental health days just like people with other anxiety disorders. So there you go. But anyways, today, it's Saturday, it's only like 1.20, not gonna read anymore for this readathon. I kind of gave up, and it sucks, but I just, I just, I, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do, I don't want to read, I don't want to do anything else, I just really don't want to. And again, it's not a reading slump, it's just mental health, and just not being motivated to do literally anything. And... So I'm just going to wrap up the three books that I read for this marathon. Yeah, I mean, at least I reread some Murakami and I did read a new to me Murakami. So those were kind of the ones that I was really, I read all of the books I was really excited to get to. The other two books on my TBR I would have loved to have gotten to, but it's okay. I'm just, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself about this because... Ah, it sucks. <laughs> um, I do I do hope to maybe do another Murakami Marathon in the future, maybe not in the summertime because I was thinking summer because I thought of this idea in like April and I was kind of like, oh my god, a lot of people have a lot more time in the summer, all of that, but summer is the worst time for personally my mental health. My mental health deteriorates extremely in <laughs> the summertime. It just, it's the worst time for me. It has been ever since I was a little kid. And I should have thought of that before trying to host a readathon during it. I should have known. I honestly, I just should have known that this was gonna happen during my own freaking readathon that I work so hard to put together. <laughs> but life happens. It's it's whatever. I know everyone is going to be understanding of this, but I do still feel kind of bad. So I might put together another Murakami marathon eventually, maybe in the winter. That could be really fun. I always like to kick off. I know a lot of people like to kick off like the new year with some rereads and stuff. So maybe we'll do another one in January if people are interested. Definitely tell me down below if you guys would like to do this again. I also know a lot of people didn't hear about this readathon until later and like didn't get to join or joined really late and stuff. So maybe more people would like to join later or you know couldn't join this time. So Tell me down below if you guys would be interested in another round of the Murakami Marathon and when you would want to do it. Because again, I have winter break January, so I feel like that would be a good one for myself. But I don't know about other people. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap up these three books I read by Murakami. Just going to talk about them in order. Um, first off, I obviously read the Buddy Read After Dark. And I have a vlog where I read the entire, I don't know which why it is, I have a vlog where I read the entire thing in one day and talked about it and discussed it and it's like a 25 minute video. So if you want to hear my thoughts on it, definitely go check it out. But a really quick wrap up of this is I, I gave this a five star when I first read it and this is my first reread of it. And at the moment for me, it's not a five out of five star anymore. Personally, I gave it a 4.5, maybe 4.75. The thing was that 
was basically just I really really hated the character Takahashi the boy that like talks to Mari and hangs out with him and stuff I just he was so freaking annoying and I like didn't realize how obnoxious he was at the beginning of uh, or when I read it the be the first time and he was just so freaking annoying I genuinely couldn't get over it like there's sometimes really annoying characters but you can be like well the rest of the book was great and that was this case but I genuinely could not look past it to the point that I can't give it a five star like he was the most annoying character I've had to read about in a long time and I'm just I, I can't believe I forgot about him um until this reread but I absolutely did love this reread I came up with so many new theories. I loved hearing everyone else's theories, um, especially Connor. I just, I did really love Connor, our co-host discussion of this book. And I was, my eyes, it was so much fun doing a buddy read of this because I, my eyes were open to so many new perspectives of this story and not just my own kind of ideas. So I got some of my own theories upon this reread and I learned so many other ideas. From other people and again it was so much fun doing the twitter and instagram group chat i thought that was so much more fun than doing like a twitter or like a thread or something again it was really really cool so i definitely if we do this again we will definitely be picking another book and definitely doing those group chats again so that's another one leave down below in the comments what you think would be a good buddy read for the next Murakami marathon and then I read my new to you Murakami, which was Men Without Women, and this is one of his short story collections. And I just thought this was okay. I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. I am really not a fan of short stories, so that definitely <laughs> didn't help <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know. I just... I just don't particularly like short stories. It just, it doesn't give me enough time. There's too much, there's too much in a short story. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I always think of James Joyce's The Dead, which Malcolm has made me read too many times for his stupid class. <laughs> and it's just like, you literally have to analyze every fucking word because like the, the author's trying to put so much into such a short amount of time that every single word matters. And like, sure, that's great if you're like literally analyzing it for class or something. But again, I am doing my MA in English literature. I analyze and look at text enough like that for school when i am reading my own fun for fun things i don't want to be doing that like i find this fun like analyzing murakami because i find it fun to do that just because but like on a new to me book i just i just want to enjoy it i just want to read it and I didn't find this very enjoyable. I found a lot of Murakami's flaws really like popped <laughs> in his short stories because obviously I'm a huge Murakami fan but even I can admit that he has a lot of flaws in his writing especially his characterizations of women and talking about sexualities and um, genders and stuff like that and I found just a lot of stuff really popped out in this especially female characters just some misogynistic stuff and I just, I thought, I just, I just, I didn't like this that much. I can't remember the exact star ratings I gave for each one. I didn't like the first one. I don't think I liked the second one. I hated the third one, An Independent Organ. That one was just like, I was kind of like, no one caught this in editing. That it just, it felt very misogynistic because literally the, the like, the short story title comes from this kind of discussion that women are all born with a special independent organ that allows them to lie. It depends on the person about the kind of lies they tell and what situation they're in and how the lies are told. But at a certain point in their lives, all women tell lies and they lie about important things. They lie about unimportant things and they don't hesitate to lie about the most important things. I'm just like, so this entire short story is about women being liars and manipulative and you're saying literally all women I think I liked I like Sherazad that was like kind of a retelling of the 1001 Arabian Nights that one was pretty good I liked Kino I didn't like Samsa and Love and Men Without Women was okay it was fine I give it three stars I I want to read his short stories because he's my favorite author and I want to get through them just to be honestly just to be able to say I have read them but 
I, I genuinely do think I will just keep them all and just keep them as a new to me Murakami to fill that challenge every single time we do a Murakami Marathon. Because yeah, this wasn't enjoyable enough for me to want to read it on my own for no other reason than enjoyment, so. And then I am I am very happy I got to this book especially because this is the book that like kind of inspired <laughs> this entire readathon. Um, this was originally going to be the buddy read. This is the book that I wanted to reread the most out of all Murakami books because I always said I read it too early in my Murakami career. I didn't understand it at all. I literally on my first read, if you watch my review for it, I literally am just like I was so lost. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't get it. And I was like, I think this could be a five star read if I read it now when I actually understand Murakami. So that is Hard World Wonderland and the End of the World. And um, also, I just, I know I keep saying this, but shout out to Anna, our co-host, to help me find this cover. This is one of my favorite vintage Murakami covers, and I love it. And I could not find it. And I ordered what I thought was it, and then it wasn't, and it was very upsetting, and she helped me find it on eBay, and I love her for it. Anyway, so this book... I, it took me a little bit to read, mostly because I was kind of falling into that little bit of slumpy lifeness and unmotivation, um, but I did finish it. Unfortunately, it was not a 5 out of 5 stars. Um, obviously, I talked about it in my vlogs. I will link wherever, down below, up there, whatever. My biggest thing with this was that when I first read it, I didn't, I didn't get it. Like... I missed basically the entire thing of this book. Like, I didn't even see really the parallels between the two worlds we're reading about. Like, I really missed this entire book when I first read it. And then I read the, like, theories people had and explanations people had for this book. And then I read it, and, like, I got it. Like, I, I got, I got it. Like, I get it. But also, I was still like, but why, though? What I'm trying to say is I don't get why this book exists <laughs> like I don't know why Murakami decided to write this like it feels very pointless to me I had a conversation in one of my vlogs about how um one of the biggest critiques and criticisms that people have of Murakami but also a reason so many people like his works including myself is that they can feel very very pointless and I love that about Murakami I love that I love that where the hell is this going? Dream-like, meandering, wandering pointlessness. I love that. I love that about his work. But this one was to the point where I was just like, why did he write this? Like, I don't get the point besides, like, the points that he shoved down your throat kind of thing. Like, there were quite a few conversations about just human nature and all of that kind of stuff and, like, your subconscious and understanding yourself and self and memory and stuff like that. And I, I definitely understood the parallels between these two worlds that are in this book a lot better this time around now that I got it. And, like, I get, I get the point of the book, but also I don't. <laughs> like, I just was kind of like, this could have been, like, an essay. Or like a short story. This could have been like an essay from Murakami just about like like a 10 page essay from Murakami about like human nature and because it, it was all a lot of very like no shit <laughs> kind of thing I guess. <laughs> I was just kind of like well yeah no duh and there were just a lot of metaphors for human nature and stuff like that and I was kind of like yeah it was just like duh. Like, he did it in such a unique way, and this story is really interesting, but it was still, like, why? I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars, though, because I did enjoy the conversations, I do love the writing, I do think the story is quite unique and interesting, and it definitely had me interested, but, like, this one wasn't nearly as fun as a lot of his books. I think my favorite books of his are the ones that I can, like, theorize about. Like, this one, Wonderbird Chronicle, 1Q84, those are ones that I just, I, I can literally come up with theory upon theory upon theory. This one was very just straight to the point. There was none of the, like, you have to come up with your own idea about it. And that's something I enjoy about Murakami is, like, kind of coming up with your own thing. But also, like, it basically gives you answers for the majority of what it's talking about. 
again, just very, like, to the point. So I honestly also am looking at past Kate thinking she's fucking stupid or she didn't actually read this book, she skimmed it because I don't see how I missed <laughs> what he was talking about in this book. But also then the ending tries to be like a normal Murakami book and like leave a lot of things unanswered and I was like you can't answer so many questions in this book and like be so upfront about like everything you're talking about and then like not give us a satisfying ending. I don't know. I just had quite a few problems with this book. I did end up really enjoying it. I know I'm sounding very negative, but I did really, really enjoy it. That's why I gave it a four star. And I did, it did go up from the three stars I originally gave it. So, I mean, that's a success in my opinion. And now I can actually finally talk about this book. Because again, I think past Kate skimmed it. Probably. <laughs> but yes, anyways, those are the three books that I read this Murakami marathon. I also do have my bingo board. So technically my bingo um, book was Wild Sheep Chase, which I didn't get to, so I just played it with all of the books that I read, and this is my board. I got bingo one, two, three, four, five times. Pretty damn good if you ask me. So yeah. So I mean, technically I only read three books, but I completed four challenges because I did bingo. So fantastical. Buddy read, new to me, and then bingo. So, pretty good. But yeah, um, anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this Murakami Marathon. Thank you so much to everyone who did participate, especially on Twitter and Instagram. You guys are so amazing, and I appreciate it so much, especially in the last couple of days when I was not active at all online. I do feel really bad. I posted a couple of things about just having some bad mental health days, but, like, it obviously was probably kind of sounded so it was like it just sucked but I appreciate you guys so much for participating and again leave down in the comments below what your wrap up was what books you read what challenges you completed when would you want to have another Murakami marathon and what book would you think would be a fun buddy read but anyways I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I love you all and I'll see y'all soon bye